So for the Orachayim Parshas Vayera, we're actually going to go back and look at a short piece in Orachayim Parshas Lech Lecha, which we did not get to see last week, and I was wondering why we didn't get to see it, but Elokim um, Ina that it should, uh, we should read it this week, because it really connects more to what happens in this week's Parsha. So if you look back on um, page Ayan Dalad, so the Pasuk there is talking about when um, Hashem says to Avram, by the way, um, your wife's name is going to change from uh, Sarai to Sarah, and you will have a child from her, and he will be um, a great people. And Avram fell on his face, Vayitzchak, and he laughed, and he said, will I have a child at 100? Will Sarah have a child at 90? And Avraham says a puzzling statement. He said, Lu Yishmael Yichiel Lefanecha which is usually translated as uh, if, only, if only Yishmael could somehow live before you. By Yomer Elokim, and this is the verse that he's referring to on page Ayin Dalet, by Yomer Elokim, and Hashem said, Aval Sarah Ishtecha Yoledes Lecha Ben. Aval, usually translated um, here as in um, however, that's an interesting word to use, right? However, your wife Sarah, she will have a child, and you will call him Yitzchak, Regarding Yishmael, Shmaticha, I hear you. I hear you, and I will bless him, and he'll have 12 tribes come from him, and uh, etc. So says the Orachaim, Vayomer Elokim, Aval Sarah, Tzarech Ladas Tam Omro Aval. What does this mean, this Aval? However, Ki Einlam Mashmaus, the simple understanding has no meaning. So, um, if you let, let's read the whole piece, even though we're really going to focus this paragraph, we're going to focus on the second half of the paragraph. First, he said to him, "You're right. If this would only be about you, so you could you could say, well, I'd ra- I'm I'm more than satisfied with Yishmael." But you need that your wife Sarah should give birth. For her sake, you have no right to give up on that, or give up of something that belongs to someone else. Meaning that she's entitled, she has a right to have her child from you. Okay, that's the first explanation, the Aval, however, meaning um, you can't just make a request like that, let it be Yishmael, because that's not just on your account, that's on Sarah's account too. Okay, but that's not the one we're focused on. Od Efshir Lomar. Ki Hashem Hikbid, that Hashem was precise, but that's a, the better word, was uh, Makbid. I'd say the word Hashem is upset, but we don't say Hashem is upset, but let's, in, uh, in metaphorical terms. Demanding, careful, careful or? Hashem was exacting from him. Al Sha'amar Lo Yishmael, Al Sha'amar Lo Yishmael, Shabachar Bi Yishmael. That Avram made this choice and said, I want Yishmael. That was not the right thing to do. Hashem said to him, I'm going to give you a child from Sarah. And Avram says, why can't it be Yishmael? And that was Avram challenging Hashem as if, um, why do you need to do that? This is good enough. And therefore, Avram made the wrong, wrong well, statement. Like, uh, I, w- I was thinking that Avram was saying, oh great, I'm going to have another son with Sarah. But let's, let's not just forget Yishmael over here. That's not what he says. He says, Lu Yishmael, if only Yishmael, Yichiel yeah, that, that the new son is going to replace no, Yishmael no. entirely. And he's saying he is going to replace Yishmael entirely. Too bad Yishmael can't be the guy. Too bad he's not the caliber that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, but Lu, as everyone translates, is Halavai, if only. Meaning he's, he's sort of rejecting. This is the Arachayim. The Arachayim is saying that Hashem is, a, is a, a, a upset with Avram for doing this. He's leaning towards Ishmael. And here comes the punishment. This is the reason why Yishmael's soul, not his body, but his soul, was of a feminine aspect. 
I'm sorry, Yitzchak. Yitzchak's, um, not Yitzchak's body, but Yitzchak's soul was of a feminine aspect. Now, what exactly does this mean? We're not exactly sure. We would have to be big, big Kabbalists to understand it. But let's just understand the words. The, the words are that his soul was more uh, um, connected or really was took the form of what the soul of a girl would have taken rather than of a boy. That's what the Zohar tells us, and this exactly what this means is very Vuhu Omro, and he says, and that's why it says in the verse, um Aval Sarah Ishtacha Yoledas Bain, Sarah Yoledas. And because of this, harba a lot of things go wrong strong, because of this. You're stronger on Sarah's side, not your side, because right. it wasn't your, you didn't right. choose. Agabe mizbeach, that's why one of the reasons why he needed the Akedah. Ki ha akeda, nitna lo lefesh hayoladas, Yitzchak's soul changes by the Akedah. Venolda lo az Rivka bazugo, that's why Rivka is born then. There is no Rivka before the Akedah because yit, there is no male soul that needs its female counterpart because the soul of Yitzchak was feminine. Not, I use the word girl, but it's really a feminine soul. And uh, that changes by the Akedah and Yitzchak's soul becomes masculine. And then once he has a masculine soul, which means he has that place in the world of what he's supposed to do, only then can Rivka be born. Maybe that's why in this piece, Parsha, Sarah says, send him away, and he says, well, well that, listen that's to your wife, because he's not objective in this situation, he favors Yishmael. Um, well, that's something else, that's just in general, that um, Avraham from seems to... we see that he's not objective, because he... Yeah, yeah, that's not, that's Yishmael. true regardless, even without the Orachim Strat. The fact that Avraham prays for Yishmael tells us, but I, I don't know if we need to, we need to um, look for proof that Avraham favors Yishmael. I mean, the Torah clearly says that uh, um, yeah, Avraham was upset about this, and he didn't want to do it. Hashem says to him, listen. Yeah, uh, there's a little short part of where it says that Avraham heard the news that Rizko was born at that time. Right. Um, and then immediately after that, that's when you have the, um, the incident where he, uh, he sends Eliezer to, uh, to do that. So I'm wondering when it says that he heard this news, of what, I think the Lashem is Shemaya there, and maybe it was him that he understood at that point that... that right, right. According to the according to the Arachim, which is really based on the Zohar, this concept, you, you'd have to say that absolutely. The uh, Yitzchak is thirty-seven years old, and there hasn't even been mention of him getting married, and uh, you, you have to wonder about that. And the answer is because Avram understood that the soul of Yitzchak was not complete; wasn't exactly in the world the way it was supposed to be. Uh, that's what the Arachim says in last week's parsha. Let's turn now to this week's parsha. Uh, it sounds like it. Is this? A, is there an opinion that says the kids actually died? Yeah, we're 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 gonna get we're we're gonna break it down. Yeah, that. But you'll notice in last week's parsha, he's very very short about it. He just gives us in in one paragraph. So on page Ayin Ches. So the angels come to visit Abraham. And they say to him, Shov Ashuv Elacha Ke'ez Chaya. I will surely return to you at the time, at the right time. So says the Arachayim, Tam Kefel Shov Ashuv. Why repeat the same word twice, Shov Ashuv? Gam Omro, and also the verse says, Tevas Vihine. It says, Shov Ashuv Elacha, I will surely return to you. Vihine, and behold, Yechaven Lomral Derech Omram Zal. This is based on what our sages tell us. That Kishanolad Yitzchak Loha Yeroi Laholid. That when Yitzchak was born, he did not have the capacity to have children. Kibam Misitra Danukva, because he came from the side of the feminine. That's what, again, those are the words, whatever exactly that means, if you try to contemplate it and understand it in physical terms, you're misunderstanding it. Ubemaisa and as we saw already before, at the time of the Akeda, Zacha Nefesh he merited a soul that was capable of having children. 
Ramaz Hamalach. That's what the angel says. Shov Ashuv. Right now, this child is Lasara, meaning he's from the feminine side. That's why it says, Right now, for now, what's before you at the moment is going to be a child that's going to be incomplete. It's going to be more the mother's child without the other aspect of his soul which completes him and allows him to be able to bear future descendants. But I will return again later. Perish Pamshni, a second time, Yashuv Elav, I will return. Perish Lebechinas Avraham, meaning Shov, I will return. Ashuv, Elecha to you, Avraham. But I will return to you from the side of the masculine. This was by the Akedah. The angel of God comes to him from heaven and it seems, Archaim doesn't use these words, but it seems like the angel that comes to Abraham and says, stop the Akedah, is the angel who came to Abraham and said, you're going to have a son. And he says, to, he comes back to him and he says, now stop the Akeda. Yitzchak is now, has now received the soul that he needs in order to be able to give birth. And what's interesting, this is the way the, the Zohar seems to suggest, is that what, what else happens the moment that Avram puts the knife close to Yitzchak, as we'll see soon, the death of Yitzchak's mother, Sarah. So the Vihine Bain the Sarah, well, he was the son of Sarah, meaning he was in that realm, in that place, where he was more of that feminine aspect. And the Orchaim doesn't say this, but one of the commentaries says, Ve'ele told us Yitzchak, these are the descendants of Yitzchak, who knows the Psukim? Ve'ele told us Yitzchak, what's the next word? Yitzchak ben Avraham, Avraham, holy that Yitzchak. Ye- these are the descendants of Yitzchak, the son of Avraham. Avraham gave birth to Yitzchak. Now, if Yitzchak is the son of Avraham, why does the Torah repeat, Avraham so gave birth to Yitzchak? Right? So it's clear that these are descendants of Yitzchak, the son of Avraham, only because there was a second birth to Yitzchak. There was a second time that Yitzchak, uh, by the Akedah. Okay, but let's get back to the Arachayim. Rabbi Warsh, is it possible Avraham Abraham? you, you, you could say, I, I have to see how that fits into everything else, but maybe some of the discussion has to do with Yishmael being the corruption of Chesed and Esau being the corruption of Gevura, giving Yishmael something maybe that he didn't see or think he could find within Yitzhak. Well, it could be. So he says, the pikidos. So now what we have is two, two times that Hashem and brings Yitzchak into the world. Pekido Rishona Shia Ba'olam Yitzchak, the second accounting, was to make sure that there would be a Yitzchak in the world. Shnia, the second time, Shetiyalo Nefesh Ayeledes, that he should have a soul that can give birth. Betam Sha'asa Hashem Kacha, now you want to know why? Why did it happen this way? The Sibas Omro, we already explained this. This is because Avram made the mistake of saying, Lu Yishmael, if only Yishmael. As I explained there, the Yesh Sodos. But there are secrets involved in here too, which is interesting because I thought everything we just read was <laughs> secrets and something we can barely understand. What? And he's telling us, like, this is the simple understanding. There's a lot more here that, that I can't share. So, what's the Mida Kanega Mida here in the back? The statement. And then uh, about Yishmael, and then what happens to Yitzchak? Well, it sounds like it's um, by, by you saying that you find Yishmael sufficient, then that becomes a limitation on on you receiving that son, as if you're now going to have a son, and then you're going to have to work very hard to actually earn 
that son being what he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. At least from Avraham's perspective, that difficulty was, was there. I mean, if he didn't say it, it's possible that we wouldn't have had, have had the Akedah. Right. That's what, he, that's what the Archaim seems to be suggesting. And, and, you know, we talked about this on Wednesday night. The, there's, so many reasons, there's so many reasons for the Akedah that, and that they're all true because you need, you need Avram should deserve that pain, you need Yitzchak to deserve that pain, you need Avram to have a purpose for it, Yitzchak and Sarah, everything. It has to fit in from every angle and every perspective. So It's long before the Akedah that Hashem says, Kiv Yitzchak Kare Chazara. And it's already, there's already going to be a male lineage right. that comes from Yitzhak. Right. So was yeah, it's just it's, it's it hasn't happened yet. It's not it's not ready. Okay, so let's turn to page Pei Hey. Now we have hoping to do a, something earlier in the parsha as well. I just this is the third piece connected to to this concept of uh, here the verse is discussing on page Pei Hey. Vashem Paka de Sara and Hashem. What's a good word for Paka? Um, remember, remember, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's more like. Um, Hashem followed through with his promise, okay? Kasher Amar, as he said. Vayas Hashem Lesara, and Hashem did to Sarah, Kasher Diber, as he spoke. And all the commentaries are bothered by this verse. Again, the, the verse says, Hashem followed through in his promise to Sarah as he spoke, and he did to Sarah, Kasher Diber, as he said. Why does the verse repeat itself? So if you see on the left side of page Hey, Od Yechaven Akasuv Al Pi Mashi Perashti BePasuk Bein Lesara Ishtacha. So he says, if you remember, I wrote earlier in the parsha on the verse Bein Lesara Ishtacha Sheba Mitzad Hanukva that Yitzchak was born from the aspect of the feminine. Ulasi Bazu Hutzrach La Akeda, which is why he had to experience the Akeda. Biyadua, who, who, and everybody knows, everybody knows this, you all knew this, Kizuhi Sibas Misa Sara, that this is the reason why Sara has to die at that moment. Now, he wrote this earlier, I don't know if we're going to have a chance to read that, but Kihik Bid Hashem Al Tzichikat Sara. We know that Hashem is upset for Sara laughing. Vikiem Agazera. And so Sarah also sins a little bit, whatever that means on her level, and so that's why the child is feminine. That's why it says, Meaning, Hashem Hashem followed through on his promise to Sarah, Kasher Amar, as he said that they would have a child. But Vayas Hashem Lesara, Hashem did something to Sarah, Kasher Diber. And he says, We know, Vyadua, everybody knows, Ki Hadibur Kasher. Whenever you see the word Vaidaber or Dibur, that's always harsh speaking. Meaning that the verse is trying to tell you that there was still some aspect of din involved in the birth of this child. When his galgalu advarim and all the things had to happen afterwards, when ifter asara misibazu, and so she only gets to see her son for thirty-seven years. Ule derech zekiyum avtocha la suite shesarat la malach near mezav aposik shacharezet dechsev la boed ashadibra ashadibra. So meaning that the promise was kept is that there will be a child, and that was but there was a delay. There was a prolonging of this process because of the tiny mistakes on their level that Avram and Sarah make, so that Yitzchak's birth actually takes form in two stages. And it's interesting because Yitzchak is, or represents the attribute of Din and of Gevura. So it's almost fitting that his birth, his life, represents HaKadosh Baruch Hu's exacting judgment on his parents. For every minor detail, in the end it all comes out good. You know, the Gemara tells us that in the future, um, Yitzchak is going to be the one that through whose attribute of judgment that's going to save us, because the Din ultimately becomes Chesed. But within the process, it looks like a difficult process. So all these trials and difficulties which you see are foretold, forewarned. In the birth of Yitzchak, it already says, Hashem gave them a child, Kasher Amar. But Hashem did something, Kasher Diber. Yeah. Um, I want to ask a question, actually, to, to the credit of our good friend, Rivka Cook. Um, so actually, in Lechukai, it says that... Um, 
Yitzhak is named as the child in Parshat Lech Lecha. He's named as the child. Um, but we say, uh, in connection with, with what you're just describing, that his name was given because Sarah laughed. But if his name was given earlier, how could it be because she laughed because at the time the, the name was given, she hadn't laughed yet? Well, Avram laughed. Yeah. Well. Yeah, in Parashat Lech Lecha says that the name of your son will be Yitzhak. And right. then in the Parashat Vayra it says Yitzhak because Sarah laughed. Right, but the Torah says... No, no, it does say that in the Torah. In the Parashat it says they called him... Um, Vayikra Avram as Shem Beno Right, they, well, they both laughed. He, he discusses that. But it doesn't say the reason why he was named Yitzchak. It says they called him Yitzchak. Yeah. Then it says they gave him a Brit. And then it says Avram is 100 years old. And then, Vatomer Sarat Tzchok HaSali Elohim Kalashmei Yitzchak Agli. She says this whole thing is one big... <laughs> one big laughter. as a joke. But, but she doesn't say that's why he's called Yitzchak. So... So it, it, it's going to fit in perfectly, and it has to fit in perfectly, because Yitzchak is Midat Adin, and there is every, every piece of the puzzle is going to represent another aspect here. And the, we discussed this on Wednesday night, too, that the whole concept of the Akedah had to fit into every single person, because in the world of Din, everybody gets exactly what they're supposed to get. So basically, my, my, take, my view of this is, because of some minor deficiencies, as of first Neshama was sort of like a sole correction for the, his for his parents, because both his parents they knew. Well, we, we know that we know that Yishmael and Esav are both filtration systems. No, no, no. Eshav, the reason Esav was born that way it is as a sole correction for Abraham and Sarah. Right. Like a tikkun for, for a tikkun for what they did. Yes, for for what that, that's did. what the Orachim is telling us. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. Okay, let's let's come back to Earth if we can call it that. So if somebody gets a child that has an issue, you should look at himself, not at the child. <laughs> that's always true. That's always true. Uh, uh, the the way that um, things that happen and really anything that happens to you. Anything that happens to you, if, if, even though it's uh, really affecting someone else, you always have to say, what do I need to do to fix myself? Because if you were, if I was a better person, then Hashem would not hurt the people around me because he wouldn't want to cause me pain. Right. Hashem, before he destroys Saddam, which is where we're going now, um, has to come to Avram and say, you know, I'd like to do this. Um, is it okay with you? Uh, on some level, that's right. what Hashem is saying. Right. Because if you're, if someone's doing the right thing, then they can protect the people around them. Because, uh, because they, uh, they, if those people don't deserve suffering, then Hashem will not make a person yeah. sick or make. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's look at page pay. This is Eridana. Hashem says. I'm, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down. What do you say? Pay. 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 So, the, this is when Hashem is going to s- destroy Saddam. Asks the Arachayim, Tzarech Ladaz, Omra Lashon Yerida. Why does it say Hashem is going to go down? And why would Hashem need to go down? The whole world is like a mustard seed before Hashem. It's an expression. It means the whole world is nothing. I shouldn't have to go down to the world. The world is uh, is uh, worthless, tiny. Va'od omro haketsa akasa. Is it really as these shouts are coming up? Is it really like what I'm what I'm hearing? V'chi adon baruchu yistapek biyedia. Does Hashem not really sure what's going on? Rashi zal perish. So Rashi explains this to us. Ki lalamid ba. This is to teach you. Shlo yifseku based in lamata mishpat elaberia. This teaches us that a judge cannot make any judgments unless he sees. Don't 
come into any case with preconceived notions. Unfortunately, we live in a world where everyone is judged based on whoever posts it first on Twitter. That's, the, uh, that's what decides the world's opinion. And uh, whoever has the most followers gets to decide who lives or dies in the eyes of the public. But it used to be a world where people were innocent until uh, they were proven guilty. And in that world, it was the people who were qualified to make those decisions who would make those decisions. And they were called judges. These are people who studied the law. And they, they analyzed the situation and looked at it. However, a judge also has to be careful. Sometimes he can w come into the case with preconceived notions. So this teaches us... Yeah. This, we have the great <laughs> judge here. Yeah. So the, this teaches us that the judge should not make any decisions. So he has to make these decisions as if, as if he's uh, looking at it for the first time. He has to really study it and see it. The problem is, as they have the beautiful explanation, but... It already says by the by the by the tower of Bavel. It says Hashem went down. Rashi says the same thing. It says Hashem went down. We learn from there that you, even though Hashem knows, you have to see. So you only need the lesson one time, right? When we talk about the Hashem said Nase Adam. So, why does Hashem say Naseh? This teaches us that you're, well, even though you are the most knowledgeable one, it's appropriate to go take counsel from others. We, we derive that from Hashem. And everyone's supposed to do that. Nobody's ever supposed to make big decisions on their own. Go, go take advice. It's, right. it's uh, Hashem. Hashem does it. You're, you're not greater than Hashem. It's a great lesson. We don't find anywhere else in the Torah Hashem does that because you only need that lesson one time. Now the lesson is there. The rest of the time, Hashem could say, this is what I'm going to do. The lesson's already been taught. So this lesson well, does, of Hashem coming uh, down does ask for Moshe's comments, kind of when, when he says he's going to destroy the people. Well, no, no, he's not asking for Moshe's advice. He's trying to get Moshe to pray for them. Right. It's not, but it's not just um, not just Hashem being courte courteous to Moshe and saying, you know, "Should I?" Right. right. Even by Avram, he's not just. Well, he's inviting him to comment. Right. Right. So that's different. Here we're talking about even though you know the answer, take take counsel, take counsel. But you only need that lesson once. So why do we need it a second time? Achen akavanehi, the answer is a beautiful explanation. Ki yodiya Hashem ha-seder ha-she yisnaig bo iman ivroim l'tzad ha-chesed va-rachmim. Hashem is giving us the secret to the chesed and the rachmim of Hashem, to Hashem's kindness and mercy. He neshur as adin no senes. The letter of the law tells us, ki akol kifi ha-mevayesh v'ha-mizbayesh. That's an expression in the Gemara. The Gemara discusses exactly how to measure different forms of damages. So, for example, if, uh, how do you measure damage you cause to a person? So, there's really no value to someone's eye. You can't. So, we measure it based on the slave market. We use the slave market to measure the value. We have no other choice. That's the system we have. What about pain? How do we measure pain? The answer is, if a person was going through a procedure, and we would say to him, you could do it with anesthesia or without anesthesia, how much would you, how much would you be willing to pay for the anesthesia? In other words, how much, how much would you be willing, if it was coming out of pocket, right. which, uh, you know, these old HMOs, you know, right. and so um, how much would, and that's how we measure the value of pain. Says the Gemara, how do you measure shame? So the Gemara, the Gemara says that that's the most difficult one to measure because ki akol kefi hamavayesh v'amizbayesh. It depends on who's doing the embarrassing and it depends on who's the one being embarrassed. In other words, every situation, every case, everything is different and the Gemara goes on to explain if a very honorable person <coughs> shames another very honorable person, that can be the worst kind of shame because it's coming from a respectable source and this is a very esteemed person that could be a lot more than just two guys calling each other names on the streets. Right. So he says, in the same way, that's really the way the system of judgment should work. When a person transgresses one of the commandments of Hashem, and rebels against the word of Hashem, 
Letzad malas or keila gadol yischayev lehe aved hu v'chal sviva. Because Hashem is so great, you've rebelled against the King of Kings. You and everyone around you should be wiped out. What happens if someone would put up a, um, their own banner within a certain king's country and declare themselves enemies of the king? They're not just going to kill that person. They'll kill that person, his family, anyone who ever knew him, and uh, all his friends on Facebook. They'll kill everyone. So here, except in this country, right? So he says, the king, the king of the world. When someone sins against him, that person deserves punishment. He angered the God of all. Anyone, any slightest rebellion should be liable for the death penalty. And the truth is, it's a fair judgment. It's right. It's right. That's the way it should be because that's actually what you deserve. However, if Hashem brings it down, if Hashem brings down the whole system and acts as if we are on the same level, as if Hashem is, let's say if God was one of us, right? so, it could be, get that it could be that people would not be found guilty. The Gamdor Amabul, Nishbad Mishbad Mavis. Maybe even the generation of the Mabul of the flood would not have deserved death. The Zamar Kamba does the Rachabal Avram Erdana Hashem says to him, No, no, you should know Erdana, I'm coming down. Pirishlo Yishbad the Erich Malas, I'm not going to judge the world from on high. Ella Bahashval and Ivraim, I'm going to judge the world as if I'm on their plane. Kiderh Omra Navi Nishafta Yachad, let's let's talk it out together. Bahashval and Ivraim Abchusim Hashem is going to equate himself in judgment to the lowest of beings. And that's how he will judge it. Now I'll look at the cries. Because the people crying to God for help, they're asking, they're asking me to judge from on high. I'm going to look at this without looking at Hashem from on high. If they still deserve the death penalty, I will wipe them out. I will know whether they deserve this punishment. Okay, I want to get one more piece in, so we're just going to leave the last two lines here. Okay, the, the idea is that um, let me go down and see is not Hashem coming down physically, it means Hashem is going to, whenever in all these situations, He's going to bring it down as if it was a court case in the world, and deal with it as if Hashem is just another um, aspect within the world itself. And that is the attribute of mercy. When we talk about Hashem wanting to create the world with the attribute of judgment, and seeing that the world couldn't survive, he doesn't say this, but that's what he means, is that it's this difference between Hashem judging us as if we're rebelling against the creator of the world and the king, in which case we don't stand a chance, or Hashem looking at us as if we just rebelled against a king or an authority where there's, where there's something to discuss. And I want to sneak in one more, if I may. Um, just a, a very important point that, that he makes. But does um, that answer why it says twice Erdono? So he, it sounds like he's saying that I wouldn't get that from the Mabel because they were, they were so bad. But, um, okay. Uh, on page Pei Hei. This is just, uh, this is very short, but uh, very important. Back to the birth of uh, Yitzchak. And it says in the verse, Vatahar Vateled Sarah La Avraham Bain. And Sarah becomes <laughs> pregnant <coughs> and she has and she has a son um, to Avraham. So you see a couple of lines in the Omro La Avraham. Why does it say she had a son to Avraham? Ramaz Bain Zela Avraham Velo Yishmael Avraham. To say, because if it would say that she had a son, that would sound like she had one son, and Avraham had two sons. And the verse is trying to tell you that this is Avraham's only son and not Yishmael. Kilo yikare shemo ben Avraham, he is no longer ben Avraham. Dechzivas, it says, ki be Yitzchak yikare lechazara. So he says, v'agam shematzinu sh'amar akasu v'atelet hagar l'avram ben. But doesn't it say clearly in last week's parsha that Hagar had a son to Avram, which means that he is his son. Sham nikra shemo Avram. 
His uh, name is not Avraham. Uh, his name is Avram. Aval Achar Shenekar Shem Avram, but after his name is changed, Shlo Yizacher Od Shem Ze Alav Ela Avraham. Once his name is Avraham, Yishmael Ein Lo Likare Ben Avraham. Yishmael is no longer the son of Avraham. It's interesting. Yishmael is Ben Avram, and Yitzchak is the son of Avraham. There are two different people, Avram and Avraham. V'ulai says the Archaim, a beautiful pshat. He says, L'azeh, this is the reason why. Hakore la Avraham, Avram, over Baase. There's a prohibition of referring to Avraham as Avram, which we don't find by Yaakov. The Torah itself switches back and forth. The same language is used in the, in the Torah. If you'll no longer be called Yaakov, you'll be called Yisrael, you'll no longer be called Avram. But the Gemara is very clear that if you refer to Avraham as Avram, you transgress a biblical commandment. The reason why this is so um, uh, important is because if you use the name Avram, you are associating this with Yishmael. Yitzchak is your only child. But this is not true of Yaakov. You know, today we're dealing in a world where Yishmael is trying right. to claim themselves to be um, descendants of Avraham. The Arachim is telling us that um, they, ha- they are descendant from Avram, from ha- Avram as he was before the perfection, before he was chosen by Hashem, before he was um, received the Not bris. Not a bad guy either. He did pass a few tests before he became Avraham. Those are right. Decent, right. Decent. But that, to be perfect, to be the chosen people, that's why the Torah is so insistent that the name change, because Avraham has no connection to Yishmael. Maybe that's why he has to send him away, because now you're Avraham, you're no longer his father. May, may, may the world uh, begin to understand that at least when it's was, uh, when the was words. Sarah instead of Sarai. Same time. Same time. Same time. Same time. Same time.